Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Combustor by Beep Street. Now they're the developers of uh, Brambo, Xeon, Sunriser and so on. Uh, highly respected devs and they've made this really cool FX app. Now it's been out for a while, um, so you might have watched some videos on it already. But what I want to do is just give you my take on um, five or six different things that I personally would uh, do with it based on the kind of style of music that I like and so on. Um, so we'll also walk through the controls a little bit as well. That won't take very long at all. We'll mainly focus on the examples. And uh, another thing I'll show you also, I find that a lot of people um, do not know how to set up LFOs properly. Um, so here, I'll show you how to do that in AUM, the host that I'm using here. So we can use, for example, an LFO to modulate some things here. Now, um, let me just mention that I've got five copies of any Beep Street app to give away to um, my subscribers and followers on different so social media channels. So um, this time, the way it's going to be is two winners for YouTube, one for Threads, the new um, basically Instagram rival to Twitter, and one for my Insta followers, and one for Twitter followers. Details of how to win are in the pinned comment, and do be careful because uh, the details are a bit different for each platform. So when you uh, go to the links that I'll put in the comment uh, to the giveaways on those different platforms, make sure you read the instructions carefully. Winners will be announced in roughly two days. Okay, so let's get stuck in here. Um, so going to look at it on a bunch of things. Now, first thing I'm going to look at here is just uh, a pretty obvious use, really, of just using it to add a bit of feedback to an existing instrument sound. So I just got here this um, Mononoke by Brambos. And so um, like this, it basically, it's pretty much the dry signal even though it's turned up wet here because I've got all the feedback and everything down. Now I find that uh, to get the processed volume on the same level as the dry signals volume, I generally need to turn the level knob up a little bit. Okay, so we can bring in feedback. We can tune that. And now it can be wise to put a limiter after this, especially if you're using it fully wet. Or just bring the feedback down a little bit. Now you can also use the filter to tame things or to just find sweet spots. And um, if you double tap the tune knob, it goes to, uh, let me see. Well, it's about 140 hertz, I think I remember. Uh, should have that in the manual there, let's see. It's tuned to a C2, okay, anyway. Uh, everything you just double tap to reset. Now it's got a MIDI thing here also, so we can use MIDI. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that later, and that, that can be super, super cool. Now it also has this band thing. Which basically makes even more complex uh, feedback loops. And it can get, get really crazy when we turn it over here. Um, we've got our input level and output level, and over here an envelope follower. So basically, um, using the attack and release of the input signal to affect the, well, to modulate the tuning and the filter. We 
hear the difference there with the short attack and fast release. Another resolution is a decimator. This can also self oscillate, by the way, if you um, put the feedback up enough and have things set up right. It does depend on your setting, though. Didn't really work there. Now, um, another cool thing. So use it on um, drums or percussion. So I took Rosetta Noir here and uh, turned the attack and decay well down. So I just get this little sort of glitchy thing. And I've added Combustor onto that. And you can see here, MIDI is turned on. And um, if we click here, and click on this, we can see that it's getting MIDI from Beat Scholar. Now, this also is getting its MIDI from Beat Scholar. But um, see, if you watched my video on Beat Scholar, you'll know. Um, when we use it as a MIDI FX, it's sending out these notes. So it can also be used to play melodic instruments. It's not, it doesn't just have to be, um, you know, a drum sequencer or whatever. I mean, all drum sequencers work like that anyway. So here, what that MIDI is doing is, you see the difference there? I turned the MIDI off and we've just got one frequency. We turned this MIDI on and now it's basically using the intervals of the notes that are being sent out by Beat Scholar. Okay, and then we can tune that to our liking. And uh, we can play around with the envelope follower. So you see here, um, we can get things kind of like drops, basically. And different types of basically pitch bending effects. So again, you want to play around with things until you get your sweet spot. This band uh, kind of makes the feedback loops a bit more complex. It's going down towards the left is a bit more subtle and it can get really crazy over here going to the right. Now what can be really cool actually also is to um, Put a reverb before it. Or play around with putting it after. Yeah, I often like it before it. Bring down the resolution for more of that decimator effect. So we 
you see that is self oscillating turn the input level down and then I bring the feedback down and it'll stop self oscillating okay so that's one thing we can do basically um yeah take percussion and uh feed in note data into it with the MIDI turned on and basically turn uh, percussive sounds into melodic sounds. Um, so another thing of course then we can do is just take a field recording type thing and here I slowed it down a little bit. Uh, if it was full speed it would be a one. So just using the internal AUM file player here. Now you see again, I've got that level knocked up a little bit. They're not getting really much going on there because I haven't turned up the feedback. So now we can get into really weird soundscapey stuff. Now we could mix the dry and wet if we wanted. Play with the tuning. And again, of course, we could um, put on a dirty big reverb like Black Hole or something. Would be pretty nice. Or again, good combustor after that. Again, we could play around with the envelopes. Personally, I tend to prefer the band on the left side a bit less extreme. Okay, so that's another possibility. Make resonated field recordings. Okay, now uh, here I've got AU Gen X and it's basically just playing some rhythmic noise and we can speed that up and slow it down here and what I did earlier was I recorded a bit of it into Paul Stretch now we and also have the input signal mixed in there. Or we can just turn it off. Now, for now, let's just uh, listen to this without calls there. So again, here, we're just resonating that. Now, what can be cool, again, add some weird reverb. Now Cascade can already do its own resonant reverbs. So you can get some really complex stuff going on there. And again, we could change the order around.
So they're basically an example of uh, just using pure noise and resonating that. And then here, uh, the last example we'll look at using um, audio thing in the Heimbach, noises. Now here I used um, some samples from Christian Krupa. Uh, if you just search, um, God, I can't remember the name of the pack now. If you search my channel for uh, Krupa uh, Tubes of Metropolis, that's what it was called. Yeah, um, you could uh, get that pack on Gumroad. I think it's free and you can um, pay donation which of course I would encourage you to do. It's a really great pack. So I made a noises uh, bank using that some of that. And I kind of manipulated it to make it play sort of melodically. And uh, that's it just going through a bit of magic verb, which I've been really obsessed with recently. Love this reverb so much. Did a video using that recently didn't do a spoken walkthrough and I mean it's a very easy app to grok. So now what um, I wanted to show you here is that here MIDI LFOs, I mean you could use any uh, LFO, I do like this LFO app a lot though, um, MIDI LFOs is modulating a couple of things here. So in AUM if you want to just see what is being modulated uh, here in combustor which is the modulation destination right this LFO is the source click here and click on assigned and we can see exactly uh, what is being received where so band is being manipulated by CC 46 on channel 1 resolution uh, being played by CC 47 also on channel 1 so that is uh, these two LFOs here. So um, this, uh, which was which again? Yeah, so this first one, the sample and hold, that is uh, manipulating the band. No, but it's not, um, well, we can, we can set it up so that it's not, uh, if we, um, I don't know it was set up like that, yeah. So here, um, the lag amount was up full. I'm just going to bring that off offset down, not that it really matters. So um, I've turned the lag up so that it's not just jumping, it's um, kind of smoothening things out when it moves position. And then uh, this sine wave LFO that's um, playing with the band. You can see that moving there. Now, um, in both of them, you can see that I limited the ranges of the CC values. So on this one, the minimum is going to be uh, 78 and maximum 127. But also it's a bit more complicated than that because here um, the modulation rate and amplitude is being modulated um, here by LFO1. So LFO1 modulating the rate and LFO3 modulating the amp. So again, just to quickly look, like so many people ask me, oh, you know, I don't understand how to set up LFOs in AUM. So let's look at that, okay? You just open an LFO uh, in a MIDI channel in AUM. Again, if you don't understand these kind of things, watch my video on AUM. Turn this down a little bit. Okay, and then um, you go to the app that you want to control. So in this case, Combustor. And we'll open this up and see, you know, for example, I could uh, control the attack. Now let's just, for, for the sake of example, um, take another, because this has four LFOs built in. So let's just say we wanted to use um, 
LFO 3, okay? Now, first thing we'd have to do in MIDI LFOs is uh, we'd want to um, turn it on. Uh, and we would to do that, we would just press here and then we would turn MIDI out on. And then here we can check it's set at the moment to CC55. Uh, you can change that if you want. And then here we have the range. So if we look where the attack is at the moment, maybe we don't want it to vary from that too much. So let's just give it a bit of a small range, kind of around that sort of rough area. Okay, and press done. And remember that uh, was CC55. Okay, so we come back to Combustor. And first thing we do is here. Okay, up at the top here, we need to make sure that it is receiving MIDI from the LF or whatever it is that we're using to modulate. So I just have this selected here. If it wasn't selected, it wouldn't have the blue tick. So just make sure it's got the blue tick. Okay, then we go back here. Um, then we go, I mean, there's a few different ways we can do this, okay? So one thing is we can just find the list and find whatever it is we want to modulate, like attack or so on, and just click in here and then just click one. And then we can drag along here to 55, or we can uh, just double tap and um, type in a value, right? So that's one thing we can do. Um, there's another thing that we can do in AUM. Uh, if we press that little thing, uh, then here basically it will uh, open. And it, you know, we, when we um, click on a knob or whatever or move something, uh, it'll immediately open up that thing and it'll recognize that I want to modulate the attack. And you can see that um, you know we've already set that up. But if we hadn't, uh, this would be empty. And if we only had one LFO that we were sending to it, we could just press learn and it would automatically detect uh, the CC number and so on. So that learn function is really handy as well. Anyway, leave it like that. So you see here, we've got that uh, attack being modulated and it's a saw wave at the moment. We could maybe change it to, I think for this, I would maybe use a sine wave and we could change the, the rate. And if we think that attack is getting too high, we can just bring this down a little bit. And if we think that's a bit too slow, we could speed it up here. We've got fast, slow, regular. See what it's like with sample and hold. That's pretty cool. It's turned up a little bit. attack modulate the, the tuning so we can go negative or positive values on that slow this down a little bit See, this is also being modulated by those other ones. We could take that off if we wanted. So we could 
could modulate the release as well. Um, so we could see what this one is, for example. Let's see. Okay, uh, 78. along this time you can see that release jumping about there So, you know, uh, I'm not guaranteeing that if you just start playing around with those kind of things with LFOs, it's automatically going to sound good. You'll obviously have to experiment and see what uh, sounds right. Again, we could um, limit the values. Give it a smaller range to roam in. that attack is jumping up so high there even though I've set this as a pretty low value that's a bit strange maybe someone can explain to me why you think that is There's no modulation going on there. Not sure, not sure. Anyway, so hopefully that's given you an idea of things. I love these kind of apps, uh, especially I think on the percussion and stuff. That's really, really fun to play with. So yeah, um, if you've made it to the end of the video, congrats. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. And if so, you've hopefully given it a like, uh, given it a thumbs up, preferably not watched it behind an ad blocker, as that's the only way that I make money apart from uh, the very few people who make a donation. Anyway, uh, see you in the next video, everyone, and take it easy, and good luck with the giveaway. All right, cheers.